peoples welcome back to my channel this is Charmel Dormitra as you can see it is raining I am just now leaving church on this first Sunday of February February 4th 2024 and typically I don't do videos inside of my car or at least I have not since I've been posting on my channel but today it's a word where God just wants me to get it out I don't suspect that it's gonna be a long word but I just want to confirm the shift and the change that has happened inside of me and I'm going to probably cry a little bit but um, a lot of things has happened today today um, I was brought to my final test and given my final test and I believe not only in the spiritual but in the physical realm I graduated onto the next level with the Lord listen you guys there's so much that I need to share concerning my testimony concerning the leaving the realm of darkness and being a high-ranking witch unbeknownst to me but through this past year God has revealed so many underhanded evil devices and wicked schemes of the enemy that he's using on people that don't even know it multiple multitudes of people in today's times and I happen to fall victims to some of his most tries and true tactics when it comes to being jumped into the realm of darkness and of the Illuminati and of witchcraft and everything else that is against the God of earth God of you and I, God of creation, Jesus Christ, and our Heavenly Father who created the whole entire world. There's just so much on my heart, but God has instructed me to create the videos as he leads me to, but today he specifically wants me to focus on modesty and modesty being my new policy listen you guys if you have not watched my very first video that I launched on 12 11 then go and watch that that was a video where I announced that God told me to fast yes I know that we are not supposed to share when we fast and or display it and disfigure our faces accordingly showing that we're fast like we don't want to draw attention to us when we are practicing our righteousness and faith um, because then once we start to try to get people's approval or get people to see us and look at us as we're practicing these things for the power and to draw closer to the Lord then it becomes as if we're being self-righteous or righteous by works and that is what Jesus came to abolish not only abolish it he did not come to do away with the law he came to fulfill it but because he is now here in our Savior and he did fulfill the law we no longer live by the law in the sense of the being bound by it and because the law is supposed to bring death it brings death it's supposed to show us our hearts and how we cannot attain every point of the law and therefore point us to Christ so I don't want to get too much into that part but the law is not abolished in the sense that we don't acknowledge it and we are not supposed to follow it because we know that it is still God's word and truth okay and we are not supposed to do away with any of it but with Jesus here we have the power and the strength to become holy and to live righteously by faith through believing in Christ Jesus so I just want to go ahead and share you guys that yes the very first few videos showed and talked about the outcomes of my fast and the second video particularly on my channel talks about miracles that happened during my fast and I encourage you guys to go and watch that video because one of the very first miracles that the Lord literally performed in my life was gave me a new heart and strong desire to change how I dress and literally coming up in the morning of the first official day within my fast 
when I got ready for work, I did not have a desire to put on pants. I did not have a desire to wear, I, I don't have, you know, revealing tops or anything, but pants. I just didn't have a desire. And God said, you know, wear a skirt, wear a dress. So that's what I did. The second day while I was taking a shower, and I shared this in that video so you could go and watch it, he said, a dress if you can. So wear a dress if you can. And I found a dress and I wore that. And you guys, I mean, it's now February 4th. So it's been about 35 days since I've been wearing a dress and a skirt since the beginning of this year. So with that being said, um, actually it's been longer technically because I started that fast December 9th. So it's been much longer, but it's been a long time now. And it is now my signature look, my signature um, of my identity because I am a child of God, but it is part of my brand. I am choosing to wear modest clothing and just, I don't feel like I've been tempted, but just recently in the last few days, Satan definitely tried to make me think that at some point I will not dress like this. Now, the Lord does want me to make this clear because he said, Charmel, I don't want you to be double-minded. Um, and he did initially tell me that when he releases the torch to my forever husband, my forever husband will become my covering and therefore he will become my leader and I am to submit to him as my husband will submit to Christ. And so I do trust in all and all that the Lord is going to speak to my forever spouse about me and about who he should be looking for in terms of his forever wife and that God's going to reveal me to him before I have to reveal me to him if that makes sense. And therefore, things about me and the identity that I'm beginning to walk confidently in and the woman of God that God is building me up to be is going to be revealed to him. And, and just certain parts of my character will be shown to him whereby he's going to already approve and know like this is her because I believe God showed me or gave me um, visions, dreams, confirmation about the type of wife I'm going to marry. And so with that comes my style of dress and my wardrobe. And I'm very happy, you guys, to say that dressing modestly is not a boring, bad thing. Like I have found really cute clothes and today I'm wearing this, you guys, and and you can see the top part of it, right? It's raining outside, so I'm not gonna get out and show you guys the full you know, look right now, but I'm going to show you guys a video that I filmed. And yesterday the Lord put it on my heart to share, you know, like this, this rap, if you will, spoken word rap. I'm a poetry writer. I used to wanna be a rapper when I was younger. You know, back in those days, I used to write up rhymes and stuff thinking I was gonna be the next Evie Eve, but no. I am rapping for the Lord, but God put that childlike spirit in me and it's gonna follow me forever, but I love to make up songs and sing and rap and write poetry and things like that. So I'm starting to see that He's keeping those aspects a part of my identity because that's at my core and he wants me to be happy. He wants me to be joy filled. He wants me to sing praises and hymns unto him and to make songs and raps and poems about him that point people to him. So this is a rap that he put on my heart last night and at first I didn't know what it was going to be about or what it was pertaining to but it is, you know, pretty cute and cool. So you guys go ahead and watch this real quick. I am not a woman who was born to do porn, nor was I meant to rock a head that is shorn. I am a woman that was made to be adorned with more than what society thinks should be worn. 
I am that woman who will wear what pleases the Lord, not what is expensive and more than what I can afford. On this platform, I will stand tall in my style of dress and not be ashamed of the faith that I confess. I am that woman who now has a message from all of my mess. And I am that woman who will not conform, but rather contest. Now be blessed. Some of y'all might be like, this girl is a little corn corn, you know, but it's all good. Y'all can say whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> like off of those, you know, talk shows, whatever, whatever. No, y'all can say what you want to say about me, but I'm just going to keep on being me, genuinely Millie, authentically Millie, okay, but obediently Millie is where I'm ultimately arriving because as long as I please God and obey him, that's all that matters. So with that being said, you guys, I just wanted to share that piece with you and circle back around the notion of being modest and why it's my new policy. So modesty is my new policy because I have found that God is helping me become the woman of God that he speaks of in the Bible. Specifically, you guys, I want to read 1 Peter 3. This is probably one of my most favorite scriptures and when it comes to counseling couples and women particularly I truly love to um cite this scripture because I think it it could speak to many women and for many reasons and in many aspects but it says this you guys this is first Peter chapter 3 verse 3 it says your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Verse five reads, for this is the way the holy woman of God from the past who put their faith or their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord, little Al. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Listen, you guys, this scripture speaks to this new modesty as being my policy because I wouldn't say that I used to be, um, at least in recent years, but when I was younger, there was a lot, and I mean a lot of vanity. Um, I wanted to wear the jewelry. I wanted to wear the flashy clothes. Now, don't get me wrong. This scripture says, do not let our beauty should not come from the outward adornment. It does not say we cannot allow our beauty contain a dormant that is seen and from the outward but it does say it should be the inner self which shall be the number one priority in other words if you're struggling to understand what this means then you will know where you stand in terms of this truth in scripture if when you don't get dressed up and you are not wearing the wigs, the, you know, extensions or having your hair done, wearing the makeup, wearing the nails and jewelry and all of that, whether or not you're going to feel confident, one, but two, you're going to know and other people will know whether or not you are truly the gentle and quiet spirit and have beauty in your heart when you face the world without these things. These are outward things. When, you know, the Bible tells us that when God told Samuel to go and anoint the next king and he was looking for David, he went to the houses of David, um, God specifically prepared Samuel and said, don't look at his outward appearance. Don't judge him based off of what he looks like because man looks out the outward appearance but god looks at the heart and so therefore this is circling right back around 
I'm still at church and my godmother just drove up to see who I was, but I want to get this word out. So yes, God already warned Samuel and said, don't look at his outward appearance because man may look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. So here's two things working here that pertains to first Peter three, three and on. If we cannot appear to be beautiful, not only to ourselves, but people. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm filming a video for my friends. It's okay. Bye. Love you. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. So, I just want to say, you guys, that at the end of the day, other people should see our beauty not through how we dress but how we interact with them amen if our interactions with them are based off of our outward appearance and how we don't feel good enough or we don't feel beautiful enough to face them or if our outward appearance dictates how we act around people and how we treat other people in any given moment that's a problem so the Bible's saying here, do not let it come from the outward adornment. Now, if you are a beautiful person and you've dealt with your inner self and you can face people whether adorned or not and be loving because Bible tells us that without love, we're nothing. But if we can show that love, whether we are beautifully dressed and adorned or not, then okay. We're on the right track. We're in the right place. Our hearts are more likely in the right place. But if we cannot find ourselves to be happy, be joy filled, be loving and kind in the midst of how we look in our presentation in front of others, then we have to really ask ourselves have I based my beauty based off of my outward appearance or is it truly coming from inside of me genuinely? And so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. God has really dealt with me because, and it's actually been a blessing because he's been chastising me and disciplining me because I'm a legitimate daughter of his. The Bible tells us that if he does not chastise us or discipline us, then we are illegitimate sons and daughters. We do not belong to him. But when we're experiencing that chastisement, that correction, that conviction on a daily basis, that means God's with us. That means God is molding us, shaping us, refining us. And that's what we want. You want to worry when, you know, you ain't feeling that pushback a little bit because are you seeking God enough to where the devil wants to come and try to tempt you and, and fight you? And whereby you are getting help from the Lord and being strengthened through him and having to work out some spiritual muscles. Yeah, that's what you want. It's not fun, but that's what you want. And so I just want to encourage you ladies, listen, our beauty is far more than what we put on. It's far more than how we look, how our hair is styled. It's far more than what we wear. I, I have gold jewelry. I have two rings on, my purity ring and my um, ring that symbolizes my forever love. It says forever love. So, you know, my future wedding band. But at the end of the day, I wear a wig. Um, God approves of this because He's the one that told me at the beginning of this year to work on growing my hair, my natural hair, which is growing and being up kept under this for a time so that he can then have the glory when it comes to my hair becoming my crown and fully covering my head and being long as this or longer. And so I'm trusting him, but it's beautiful because when I'm not wearing this, and when I'm not dressed up, I do feel like, I can't explain it, but I feel so humbled. A different feeling than what I felt before. Like like I said, when I was in my early teens, um, early 20s, there was a lot of vanity. I didn't want to go to a grocery store, you know, without looking made up. But that wasn't because 
you know, I wanted to be put my best foot forward, it was because I was vain. I didn't feel the best and so forth. Now, if I have a desire to go out and get dressed up, it doesn't come from soul vanity. It comes from faith because I could be meeting my husband anytime soon, right? <laughs> so that's the reason why, but that's not the soul focus. That's not the intense focus for me on a daily basis, day in and day out period is just not and there's peace in my soul in my heart about my identity and what I present to the world and how I express and interact and engage with others when I'm outside of any made up hair makeup and so forth this is what stays consistent praise be to God and so that's why God says let it be your beauty should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is great in God's sight. And I just want to touch on the gentle and quiet spirit part, you guys. This part, which goes along with the full chapter of three, because it's talking about how husbands and wives interact with each other. This too has been something that I've been practicing and have been able to do that I've never been able to do before. Listen, you guys, the phenomenon of a gentle and quiet spirit. I remember I was like in second and third grade as early as that and I was being tested even by God and now I know it was God's voice. I used to be challenged by God himself to go a day without having to draw attention to myself, to go a day without having to be the class clown and to be loud and almost obnoxious and, you know, wanting to be in the limelight, wanting to be seen. And I couldn't do it. I was the class clown. I was always, you know, very talkative and things like that, but it was out of the wrong place. People were drawn to me not only because I carried myself well and I did make sure that I had a presentable outward appearance, but because I was so rambunctious and so verbal that it was like they listened to what I had to say because I was always saying something. But there was times that I know God tested me and wanted to challenge me to not say something because again, it went back to the inner beauty and how I viewed myself and my identity. I associated my identity with how much attention I got from other people. Am I talking to somebody? So that's where I was building my self-worth and my identity and my beauty so to speak was based off of how much I can attract people to myself and how much people which give me attention and that was wrong that was the vanity of it all because I was solely only happy or expressed joy when I was getting that attention but when I didn't I felt extremely bad about myself that's a problem but now, having been isolated and having had to cut off some folk and God snatching folk out of my life, I literally feel like when I'm in the presence of other people, I can be so quiet, you guys. Like, I am making so many moves, so many decisions outside of the limelight and outside of people's knowledge that that is my strength that is the power of the lord working through me because the bible says in proverbs don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing don't let them know what each other is doing that's the beginning of wisdom and i have been practicing that and being able to do that with the help of the holy spirit more than i have ever been in my life and i'm actually getting more done because you guys have to understand not everyone is for you you got to really discern these days who is for you and who is not. And so you guys, as it's raining outside, I just see this as, as a time of harvest, a time of understanding God raining down wisdom, power and glory and understanding and discernment for many folk. And we just have to discern as women. Listen, just like my little song said in my rap, we were not born to be sexualized. We were not knit inside our woman's 
our woman's, yes, we are women's, but another woman's womb, which are our mothers, to be sexualized, to do porn. You know, I got testimony for days, you guys, about how I was deceived in so many ways, so many ways. And watching celebrities and things come up through that, you know, the idolization of that, you guys, we are being groomed and we don't even know it. I'm no longer being groomed. Today, I stepped away from that. But, well, at least God confirmed that me wearing my white is officially, you know, a physically manifest stated confirmation that I am his holy church. I am purified, cleansed, and washed away all my sins through just the obedience of Christ, okay? And it's just a beautiful thing what God can do for us and how he can radically change us. But yes, this is where I'm at right now. This is what I'm doing. This is what the Lord's leading me to do, how he's leading me to dress. Now, when I get my husband, God said him and I will have a conversation and it depends on once again, my husband who is my covering. If he says at some point, honey, it's okay if you wear this pants set or, um, you know, these pants or whatever, I will just have to have peace. I got to go where the peace goes, um, or, or where it is. I per se am married to Jesus right now. He's my husband. So Jesus wants me to dress like this. He gave me a strong desire. He supports it. And I just naturally have been transformed by the renewing of my mind about dressing like this. It brings me more femininity. It makes me feel like I'm more feminine. It helps me to feel um, obviously more modest, less showy, less, what's the word I'm looking for? Less, um... I guess less, I can't, less vain. I don't know because pants don't necessarily make a person vain. I can't think of it because I just been finding really cute outfits too anyway. Um, and I try to wear dresses and skirts that are covering the top of my knee cap. And I think one day I wore something a little bit too short. I probably won't be wearing those again without wearing another skirt um, or you know, pants, leggings under it, but I'm just really thankful that God really provided for me. I went to thrift shops this past month and bought clothes for like multiple clothes and shoes, almost brand new for $50 or less. And so this kind of falls in and kind of ties in into so many other biblical principles like and like I mentioned in my, my rap, like I'm not going to try to stunt on people and spend money that I don't have and buy things that I can't afford. Now, am I against expensive things? No, I'm not. If my hubby or Jesus himself says, Tramil, because this is what he does with me, no joke. He'll say, let's, let's go out to lunch and dinner. Even though I'm paying for it out of my pocket, I know that my source is Jesus and he gives me the resources that I even have today. And so therefore, he'll say, let's go out and eat dinner or go here for lunch. It's on me. And I say thank you because I know it is on him. He's the one that gives me the power and strength to get wealth, which is what the word says as well. And so I know it's him and I attribute it to him and he'll do the same thing with me with certain clothes. Like he'll say, let's go to the thrift shop and go shopping. So there will be a time that I suspect he will say, let's go to Chanel or let's go to Gucci and I'm gonna get you a bag. It's on me. And even though I'll be paying with my money that he's provided for me out of my pocket, out of my debit card or whatnot, I know it's from the Lord. And so once again, if my future hubby wants to surprise me with an expensive bag or shoes um, or items of clothing, I'm not going to be against it. I'm going to be thankful, but I'm not seeking those things. I'm not seeking beauty and my beauty, nor my worth, nor my identity and placing that on those things. Those things are perishable. And so the inner hidden person of my heart and and who I am is not I am alive with Christ okay so at the end of the day 
it's just a beautiful thing. I can go on and on, on and on and on and on, but I believe the Lord is saying, stop, stop, stop. You got the point across. So I just want to encourage you ladies to really examine yourselves, examine your hearts and ask yourself if you are truly living for the Lord if your dress is inspired and or if you are driven by wanting to look the best and having outward beauty so that people can think you are a good person or think or believe that you got it going on and you are richer than you are then your heart's in the wrong place baby just stop just stop no it ain't cute god knows so that's why i'm saying there's two sides here even though we are portraying one thing god truly knows our hearts so why try to fool him when he knows it all anyway anyone want to answer drop it down in the comments let me know let me know if you come up with an answer why even try and act like we got all of this and we balling like this when we got debt we got credit cards to pay off we ain't paid off cars. We got, you know, payment plans with this place and that place. Come on, let's be for real. And I can't talk. That's why I'm dressed like this. And I'm thankful for my thrift store clothes because honey's trying to pay off debt anyway. So I ain't got no time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it. I'm about to make it to my auntie's house for some good old food she be feeding me so good every time i come here but i hope this word blesses somebody and before i end i'm gonna show you guys how i dressed for the first 31 days of this year i dressed modest modestly for 31 days and i'm continuing i thought initially that i was going to film 365 days of dressing modestly but god said Charmel sometimes you you go overboard like just do 31 days do this video and that's it people's going to get the gist of it people's going to understand that you have chosen to make modesty your policy praise be to god so you guys go ahead and watch this short clip of my 31 days of modesty i hope you guys get inspired by some of these looks perhaps this could be a inspiring lookbook for you for 2024 i did the best that i can a lot of these things i owned many of these things i did purchase at thrift shops but for the most part i was just being creative some things i wore multiple multi, multi multiple times yeah y'all i haven't eaten it is sunday i just got done with a good service at church i'm tired um yeah it's one of those days but you guys i love you with the love of jesus and i have to keep remembering to do my outro and to make it consistent but you guys if you haven't heard me say this before i'm gonna say it now Remember, Jesus gave his blood so you can be saved. Now behave, okay? Go ahead, y'all. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.